All right, so here's another video for my playlist, Problems with the Book of Revelation, where we're going to consider the relationship of John the Revelator with Freemasonry. And the content of this video will largely come from excerpts as found in the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, where what I'm going to discuss here is from the section titled The Apocalypse of, that is, of Freemasonry, where let me be specific for you who are not familiar with my channel, that my problem with this one book called Revelation does not mean or indicate that I have problems with the rest of the God-spirited writ. No, I take the Word of God very seriously, and the focus of my channel is not exclusively regarding this one book, where I teach many things out of the God-spirited writ. So understand, I take 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 very seriously, where all the writ, singular writ as a body of the whole, is beneficial into many things. However, this one diversionary book simply does not belong in the all of the writ of prophecy. What it belongs to is Jewish myth, Titus 1.14. It belongs to that which has its origins in evil Gnostic doctrines of demons carried through errorizing spirits, not the Holy Spirit. So the book erroneously called Revelation has very questionable origins. But what can be determined in its contents is that it is certainly of mysticism. The prophecies within it are self-fulfilling prophecies. So I just wanted to be clear that because I nullify this one book does not mean I nullify the all of the writ of prophecy, and neither should you. So with that said, let's move on with the video, where again the following information is derived from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, where I might also add, the institution of Freemasonry is pure evil. And if you disagree with that statement, well, do your own research because... There is a plethora of information out there showing the relationship of Freemasonry to Luciferianism, otherwise known as the Illuminati, Illuminatarianism, which has its relationship to the one named Hillel in the context of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, where the Hebrew noun Hillel is better understood as the Illuminator. Concerning a prophetic statement regarding Satan himself, of which I discuss in my video, The Origin of Evil. So those who belong to the sect of Freemasonry, or the Illuminati, worship Hillel, the son of the black redness, the son of the fourth watch time. However, the point of this video is not to prove the relationship of Freemasonry to the Illuminati, but rather to show the connection of the Book of Revelation and its writer to the mystic sect of Freemasonry, which is satanic where let me also clarify that the pseudographical use of the name John by the writer of this one spurious epistle was not the same John the Loved of Jesus Christ, who did pen the epistles bearing his name John and 123 John. And that John the Revelator is not John the Loved is seen in many proofs, which I talk about in my videos contained in the playlist called Problems with the Book of Revelation. So in this video, I'm going to pull out highlights regarding statements as found in the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, where the adoption of this John, John the Revelator, as being one of the patrons of Freemasonry is seen in a variety of theories that were handed down from historical writers of Freemasonry as to why they believe that he was actually connected with the Illuminati sect based on their own words, okay? So the claim that several traditions among the historical writers of Freemasonry claim him, John, as a brother, among which Masonic students would be familiar with, recognizing that this John would have assumed the government of the craft to the level of a grandmaster in his own days, as far back as after the demise of John the Baptist. Again, stated in their encyclopedia. So the institution of Freemasonry doesn't deny what they deem as fact, 
in that there's something both in the life and in the writings of the book of Revelation which closely connects him with what they term our mystic institution. So Freemasons deem their institution to be mystic, where I quote from the encyclopedia, he, John the Revelator, may not have been a Freemason in the sense in which we now use the term, but it will be sufficient if it can be shown that he was familiar with other mystical institutions, which are themselves generally admitted to have been more or less intimately connected with Freemasonry by deriving their existence from a common origin, where it also states such a society being the Essenian fraternity, where under the heading fraternity we read, a mystical association of speculative philosophers among the Jews, whose organization very closely resembled that of Freemasons, Stonemasons, where it also states that there are those who even supposed by some to have derived their tenets and disciplines from the builders of the temple, which brings to my mind verses such as 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7, along with these other verses that I have put on the screen for reference. Where again, let me emphasize the speculative aspect, a mystical association of speculative philosophers among the Jews. Where, as I've said it before in other videos, this one book is what I term hyper speculative, in the fact that it contains doctrine after doctrine which cannot be supported in any of the rest of the writings of God, but are merely speculated on such as the millennial 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ on the earth, which is not found in any of the all of the writ of prophecy. Now, it's also stated in the encyclopedia here that within the sect, there is little doubt that St. John, okay, John the Revelator, who they term St. John the Divine, was in a scene stating that the writing and the life of John furnishes sufficient internal evidence that he was originally of that brotherhood. Where they point out that such statements could not be said for the other prophetic writers, naming Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, it's further believed that in the institution of Freemasonry that if anyone who has investigated the ceremonies performed in the ancient mysteries, they state that the spurious Freemasonry, as it has been called of the pagans, are compared with what they term the mystical machinery used in the book of Revelation. So what that's saying is that even other pagan religions recognize the relationship of the writing style of pagan mysticism to the book of Revelation, to the Freemasons, which they term spurious Freemasons, where we continue reading, leading one to the irresistible conclusion that John the Revelator was intimately acquainted with the whole process of initiation into these mystic associations, and that he had selected its same imagery for the groundwork of his own epistle. Where on the screen here, I'm just giving one example of the imagery in relationship to the so-called lambkin, which word lambkin in itself is another matter altogether, which I talk about in my video, Another Jesus as well as part one of my video series, Lambs and Sheep. So not only do Freemasons recognize the relationship of this John to their own mystical institution, but so do other pagan religions. Now, next in regards to the origin of pagan idolatry, ascertained from the historical testimony and circumstantial evidence by George Stanley Faber, we read in the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, where they quote from this work saying, it has with great ability and clearness shown that John the Revelator applies the ritual of the ancient initiations to a spiritual and prophetic purpose. Mr. Faber states the whole machinery of the apocalypse from beginning to end seems to me very plainly to have been borrowed from the machinery of the ancient mysteries. And this, if we consider the nature of the subject, was done with the very strictest attention to poetical decorum. He states that St. John himself is made to personate an aspirant about to be initiated, and accordingly the images presented to his mind's eye 
closely resemble the pageants of the mysteries, both in nature and in order of succession. So here, this Mr. Faber, a historian and writer of pagan religion, is connecting dots to this one book of Revelation, to pagan mysticism, where he continues pointing out his observation, stating, The prophet, John the Revelator, first beholds a door opened in the magnificent temple of heaven. And into this he is invited to enter by the voice of one who plays the hierophant. Where the word hierophant, if you don't already know, defines a person, especially a priest, in ancient Greece, who interprets sacred mysteries or esoteric principles. Where in the text of Mr. Faber he points out that this angel is the hierophant, who acts as the part of an interpreter, is conducted into the presence of a female who is described as closely resembling the great mother of pagan theology. Where, on a side note, I discuss this one in my video called A Sun-Like One, described as having female nipples, Revelation 1.13. Where on the screen I'll also place two verses in the Old Testament where we read the same context of those bosomy idols. So the connection of the Freemasons to the Illuminati to what they believe is actually quite disturbing in relationship to this epistle, this epistle of self-fulfilling prophecy. Because for all intent and purpose, the goal is the initiation of the human race into the new world order, of which doctrines such as seen with the so-called mark of the beast are already causing people to become hysterical. So this book is manipulating people who heed to its doctrines as if they are biblical prophecy when they're actually self-fulfilling prophecy. Watch my little video, Bill Cooper, because Mr. Cooper also discusses the apocalypse of Freemasonry and the relationship of this epistle to what he believes will play out in the New World Order. So here are more things to consider in relationship to this one book, which I believe belongs to Jewish myth, Gnostic Jewish mysticism, which again are not the word settings of God. They are not according to the understandingness into our knowledge of the mystery of the God, the Father of Christ, in whom all the stores of the wisdom and of knowledge are away secreted ones. Colossians chapter 2 verse 2. So let us not be heeding such myths, because Paul wrote there will be a term, a limited specific time with a beginning and an end, where they will not bear teaching being healthy, but according to their own desires they will heap on for themselves teachers as ones tickled by them the hearing, where they will turn away the hearing also from the truth, but they will be twisted out onto myths. And when you search social media such as YouTube concerning matters of biblical prophecy. Almost everybody that you come across teaches out of the book of Revelation while ignoring the large majority of the all of the writ of prophecy in the rest of the writings. It's always this one book which is the go-to for biblical prophecy. However, the parables of Jesus contain the mysteries given for us to perceive, which are according to prophetic events of the last days. When the learning ones of Jesus asked him why he spoke in parables, he said, To you it is given to know the mysteries of the regency of the God, but to the rest it will be said in parables. So if one is not understanding parables, they're not understanding the mysteries of the regency, but rather they are beside cast, parabole. So what one needs to really do is flip around their concept of what biblical prophecy is and seek the understanding in all the rest of the writ concerning what God himself has pre-explained, nullifying what God has not pre-explained, that being the content of the book of Revelation, which is not only hyper-speculative but completely diversionary from the all of the rest of the writ of prophecy. However, if one cannot perceive or understand the rest of the writ of prophecy, how can they recognize this one epistle for what it is? Myth, mysticism, of which Gnosticism belongs. And sadly, the primary doctrine still believed today is millennialism, 
the idea that Jesus Christ is going to return to the earth to set up an earthly kingdom for 1,000 years, where it also states Satan will be bound, but then re-released for a term. Doctrines found nowhere in any of the all of the writ of prophecy, but have their roots in Gnostic Jewish myth, where in yet another video, I'd like to talk about the origin of millennialism in relationship to a Gnostic named Serenthus. So until next time, peace to you all in Christ Jesus.